Hi everyone, it's Mike with Presentation Plus Ups here with another Thursday presentation tip. This one really is something near and dear to my heart and that is three essential morph transition tips. So three things to be on the lookout for to really up level your presentation game using the morph transition, let's get started. All right, so for those that aren't familiar with morph, here's the concept. And I'm gonna peel back this overall slide deck and show you what I mean. So I'm gonna unpack it under the transitions menu and I'll go ahead and pin this for you. After the none transition is morph. And this is the secret weapon of PowerPoint is that you can keep objects and by objects, I mean shapes. For example, here's a back shape, here's text, here's images, and you can have these items persist from let's say slide four to slide five and change their properties. And when you do that, and you keep this morph transition persistent between the various slides, the animation just happens. The shape shifting just happens. The, the math is just done by PowerPoint. And it really unlocks new possibilities for visual communication. And not just for entertainment's sake, but really to help you highlight information. So that would be one essential thing I'd say is, be on the lookout for that. And in this little workshop, I'm gonna show you how we are using these three shapes. So for example, let's just start here with my slide four, and I am going to put on the selection pane. And if you've seen me do a couple of these in the past, you'll know that I am a major advocate of this selection pane. This allows you to show and hide different assets, different objects on your slides and also rearrange them all around your slides. This also is essential to keep all this nice animation nice and clean for you when you're working on duplicating your slides and rearranging objects. So if we look at this slide, and we mentioned that we can do some things. So one of the things I really like to do on this tip is shape shift shapes. So this is just a rectangle shape. So this is not an image. This has been done with something as mundane as going up to your shapes, dropping in a shape, and giving it a format, a look. So if I go, okay, I like this color, hit the format pater, and go ahead and select it there, we've got a shape, okay? So if I've got a shape from one slide, I copy that and paste it to the next slide, and just move it, just like a piece of taffy here. If we put this in presentation mode, you're gonna see that shape will shape shift, okay? So that, just from a foundational perspective, is so valuable for you in terms of being aware of things. Now, in this case, I have this rectangle, and you could even rename that. So if you're doing several slides, and you're gonna wanna have this be a persistent object, I might change the name from rectangle to something like uh, mask, okay? So if this is a mask or a texture, you'd give it that name. Now, on this slide, this looks like this is just a gray background, but surprise, surprise, if I show and hide this, this is that same shape, just over here in, in this case, I've changed the color to gray. So if we look at that one piece alone and we go back into presentation mode and hit the forward button, you're gonna see immediately, you get a lot of bang for your buck in terms of that ability to liquefy your slides and have these persistent objects shape shift and do a lot of work for you. So that's one of the three things that I rely on heavily to really max out my presentation effects and give a lot more of that snap and pop to my presentations. Now, let's take a look at another item. So in this case, if we go up here to my slide four, and again, I'm just using slide four and five as my examples, you're gonna notice we have a text box here, and I'll just go ahead and show and hide that for you, with the number three. Now, I want you to notice if I select this text box, this is currently at a Helvetica new standard light. So that's a thin font. Now that same three over here is blue, and it's now at a medium font, and it's much thicker. So again, as long as that object is identical, so I haven't changed it to a different, um, I haven't changed any keystrokes on it. If we just go ahead and go into the morph, you're going to see we get a lot of bang for the buck. It not only moves position, it's changed size, and getting a lot of nice effect there. And, and if I wanna just take this and go extreme, I'm gonna go ahead and make this really large. Now you notice it's at 413 point font right now. 
but let's just really stretch this out, max this out, and just get ridiculous with it here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and hit Control Shift greater than to maximize this. We are taking this up where it's so big that when we go from slide four to slide five, it gets ridiculously large. Now, the cool thing is because that's what we call a vector object. In other words, it's defined by math. We could take that to an infinite size and get a different effect for it. Okay, so you can see if I just go ahead and hit control wheel mouse, I can make my slide uh, all the way down to 10%. So I can see the slide is super small, but you almost get, uh, if you've ever seen Prezi, you, you get that type of effect to it. And you could even potentially shift it off, off camera here. We can even select that, that text. We can go into the format text effects and let's go into its fill color, maybe turn that into the transparency, kick it way down, maybe change the color to uh, white, for example, and just see what happens here in terms of that look and feel. And you're gonna just see, you, the world is your oyster in terms of creativity of what you can do. So let's just go back to slide four and put this into presentation mode. And you're gonna see, you can do some really cool stuff. So again, it's so contextual based on what you're doing but I want you to know you can stretch the boundaries of what you think is possible with more. So we've talked text, we've talked shapes. What I would encourage you to do is when it comes to images, I'm gonna take this image, and you're gonna notice right now it's currently the second lowest element on our layer hierarchy. And I'm gonna take this shape, I'm gonna hit copy on it, control C, I'm gonna bring it over here, and I'm gonna make my presentation plus ups logo really big going to put it right in the middle, which seems like insanity. But on the selection pane, I'm going to drag that down again to where it's the second lowest object to keep that layer hierarchy consistent. What I'm going to do is I'm going to right click it. I'm going to go down to format picture. And when I go into the picture selection and go to transparency, I'm going to turn that all the way to 100% transparent. And you're going to see you can get some cool effects with images by just changing that transparency as well. So, so many cool things you can do in terms of three different objects. For me, it's shapes, it's text, and it's images. With those three things alone, the world is your oyster in terms of what you wanna do. And here's a perfect example, if we go to my ending here for you, is we've got a shape on here, so let's just back this up. It's gone transparent, we're bringing it back, and it sneaks back on screen. And then we have another shape whip over that's asking you to like, to subscribe, to tell a friend, hit the notifications button. But you can see you can get so much done, make your presentations just not feel like a document. It feels like a living organism by using these features. So that's it for today. Hopefully you've liked this low fidelity how-to video. Post your comments below. Let me know what you think. If there's something else that you want a little secret sauce on when it comes to presentation tips and techniques, let me know I'm here to serve you. In the meantime, thanks so much and please make it a great day. <music>